hands. Makes me want to clap my hands. Makes me want to talk in tongues a little while. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen, amen. And we need strength in this hour that comes from God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, turn to your neighbor. Hallelujah. And say, I want to be a lively stone in the house of God. Say, I want to be a lively stone. I don't want to be a tombstone in the house of God. I want to be a lively stone in the house of God. How many want to be a lively stone? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are the sheep of his pasture because we're made after his image, and he is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. And the Lamb of God produces sheep. The Rock of Ages produces lively stones. How many understand everything that God describes the church as being? It's a reflection of himself. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe joy, true joy, comes from heaven. I don't believe it comes from the earth. I don't believe it comes from a bottle. Doesn't come from a syringe, does it? The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are experiencing joy that the world has never tasted. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's the joy of salvation. Hallelujah. How many are thankful? Amen. For the joy. Amen. Luke 15 talks about the joy of repentance. Amen. Hallelujah. Over one sinner that repents. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just one sinner. will make all of the angels in heaven rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God didn't say, I've got to have a thousand before I get the angels to really shout about this. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. When you repented of your sins, you made heaven shout. There was rejoicing. Hallelujah. Real joy begins in heaven. And it starts down here. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a true joyous feeling, hallelujah, of being forgiven of your sins. Hallelujah. Having your sins washed away and getting the joy, amen, of the Holy Ghost in the power, amen, of speaking in tongues. And how many are thankful? Hallelujah. Amen. In Acts, I believe it's 2.32, uh, it states this, this Jesus. Everybody say, this Jesus hath God raised up, whereof all we are witnesses. Hallelujah. Amen. And and I'm going I'm to preach just a little bit about that, so I'm going to kind of hold, hold on because I could just launch right into this. Shake hands with a neighbor, somebody close to you, and say, I'm here to get something from the Lord. I'm not going to leave here, hallelujah, the same way I came in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And I've got... I've got a desire every time I come to the house of God, amen, hallelujah, to receive more of God. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Well, clap your hands. ashamed to ask God for help every day. Amen. He's a present help. Amen. And I want to help everyone here tonight. Hallelujah. If you don't have amen, if you don't know how to pray, I want to help you learn how to pray. If you don't know how to repent, I want to help you learn how to repent. Hallelujah. If you're thinking about baptism, I want to baptize you in Jesus' name. If you want the Holy Ghost, I'm here to help you Get the Holy Ghost. And if you've got the Holy Ghost, I'm here to get, hallelujah, you back on fire again. 
Hallelujah. And if you are on fire, hallelujah, I want you to help me get the whole church on fire. Amen, amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, amen. Let us turn, hallelujah, to the book of Acts, chapter number 1. Acts chapter number 1. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe God can do something in just the next little while, hallelujah, for somebody that reaches for it, that asks for it, hallelujah, amen, that truly is, amen, hallelujah, here in heaven's dinner bell, <laughs> blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb, hallelujah, amen, uh, amen, we're called to the marriage supper of the Lamb, and what a wonderful invitation that is, I want God to help me tonight convey something that he wants to put in the hearts of this end time church hallelujah amen if you will read with me acts one and one the former treatise was the book of luke amen the physician hallelujah amen they didn't even call him dr luke they just called him luke <laughs> thought i'd throw that in there praise god the former treaties have I, amen, made, O Theophilus. Theophilus means God lover. Theophilus, hallelujah, God lover. This book of Acts is for somebody that truly loves God. Hallelujah. And I believe I'm going to preach to some people that are in love with Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, hallelujah, all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments. Everyone say commandments. Unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. The reason, hallelujah, amen, it says that until the day he was taken up, because he was going to fill his apostles. He was going to fill his church. And through them, he was going to teach people how to get to heaven. How to have life and life more abundantly. Amen. The Bible says, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. God is a passionate God. God loves emotional worship. You can't be on fire and look... If I set you on fire... you. It ain't hard to see who's on fire. Anybody want some fire in your life? Hallelujah. It was, amen, it was so life-changing. They started, they got out of their seats. They started dancing, shouting, talking in tongues until everybody that looked on them said, these are drunk. But these are not drunk as you suppose. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God's a consuming fire. God still answers by fire. When you build that altar right, the fire will come. The evidence of God's acceptance will be visibly seen. You will get Holy Ghost and fire. It'll make you clap your hands. It'll make you talk in tongues. It'll make you shut. He makes his ministers a flame of fire. I don't want somebody reading the Bible. I want somebody preaching the Bible. Hallelujah. Speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, God comes to church. He was the first one at church tonight. Because he never left.
this is God's house. And he's going to do things in his house you're not going to see anywhere else like what God does in his house. Hallelujah. I believe you can have miracles in the street, but bring them here because there's no baptismal tanks at Walmart. And you got to get baptized right. Hallelujah. And this is what the Lord commanded them. Hallelujah. Amen. That they should not depart. He said, don't leave Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. Hallelujah. He commanded them, don't leave that city till I give you the Holy Ghost. Don't leave this house till you're full of the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues. Don't leave this house till you're baptized in Jesus' name. Don't leave this house till you and right have you and God have everything all worked. Hallelujah. But he said, wait for the promise. That's the Holy Ghost. Which saith he, amen, hallelujah, for John truly baptized you with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. They had to wait. You don't have to wait. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Turning with me now, if you will, hallelujah, to the book of Acts chapter number 6. And this just got a hold of me. Hallelujah. All over again. Amen. Hallelujah. How many love the Lord tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In verse number 7, just one more verse here. And it says, and the word of God increased. That means it was preached every. It was in every street. People had to tell somebody what God did for them. Come on, does God still, hallelujah, cause a witness to arise inside of you? And all of a sudden, you're telling, let me tell you about the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you about the day that God washed away. My, let me tell you, God's still a healing. Because they have seen, hallelujah, amen, God's still alive and well and at work upon this earth. And the Bible says this, I love this. The Word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of priests. We're lifting the bar here. Hallelujah. We're obedient to the faith. And I want to preach just for the next little while, amen, about the book of Acts revival. It's never stopped. It's 28 chapters, but we're adding chapters in our generation. Come on. Holy Ghost is still being poured out. People still getting baptized. Miracles are still taking. People are still being raised from the dead. Cancers are leaving bodies. Satan is still defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I said, I want to help you tonight. Hallelujah. And I might slow this down. I said I might slow this down in a little bit because, amen, I'm not just interested in just a sermon. We need a move of God. I said we need a move. We need a sound from heaven to come from somebody that's filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to hear somebody talk in tongues. Tonight. I want to hear the name of Jesus called over somebody in water baptism. Anybody need a miracle? Why don't you ask God for it right now? Let him hear your voice. Come on, let's lift our voice to the Lord one more time this evening. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this book. We thank you, God, for the pages. Hallelujah. We know that your word will never pass away. 
We know, Lord God, hallelujah, you gave us the same Holy Ghost as in the book of Acts. And we're asking God your touch tonight. I bind every spirit that wants to try to quench the preaching of the Word of God in this place tonight. I bind every devil that wants our church to not have revival. That's keeping people from worshiping God. God, I want you to loose them tonight. I want hands, hallelujah, to keep clapping. Speak to steal, keep dancing. Witnesses to steal, share their testimony. For the glory of God, the increase of your kingdom of which there shall be no end. Hallelujah, and clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. And God richly bless you, and you may be seated this evening. Hallelujah. I am thankful not just for the book of Acts, amen, but the God of the book of Acts. And the things that were recorded in, amen, these pages are for us and future generations. Hallelujah. I believe the Lord is coming. I believe this is the generation upon whom the end of the world is come. Come on. Hallelujah. But I believe until God comes, the church needs to see the supernatural. They need to experience miracles. They need to see their prayers answered. Whereas you and God and you prayed and you watched that individual come to church and pray through and get baptized. Come on, somebody. Your prayers matter to God. Hallelujah. Amen. This introduction of Luke, amen, concerning Jesus as he begins to write of the history, amen, and things that took place after Jesus and prior to Jesus' ascension. Hallelujah. The Bible says, amen, this is what Jesus began to do and to teach. Everything you read in the book of Acts still needs to be done and still needs to be preached. We still need to preach you can have the Holy Ghost. We still are going to preach hallelujah. You can shout until somebody accuses you of being drunk because you have imbibed, amen, in the Spirit, the new wine for so long that it changes the way you dance. I'll just tell you, from being out in the world, some people wouldn't dance till they'd had a few. And then it would totally change that, that character that was, uh, amen, timid. When they had a few, they would hear something out of the loudspeakers. And they'd get out and I'd go, what got into them? It was alcohol. But I'm here to tell you, this will take a, a teenage girl. That's kind of backward. This will take a teenage kid. Come on. That's hard to hear their voice. Come on. And when God hits them, they're going to dance. They're going to shout. They're going to be a different creature than you've ever. And moms and dads ought to want to see it in their children. And a good way for it to start is mom and dad to do it in front of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let me preach this just a little while. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Just prior to the writing here, we understand that Jesus Christ was put on a cross. And the blood that flowed from Emmanuel's veins, amen, that dripped off of his body, amen, into the earth. It caused earthquakes. It caused the sun to shine its, amen, amen, to hide its face as the world went into eclipse. Where the moon 
covered the sun, hallelujah, and it was in darkness because God still does a great work when it's dark. Because even when it's dark, hallelujah, God's got some lights on somewhere. And while that was taking place, help me preach here tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. The priests were still in there. Hallelujah. Accepting sacrifices. Hallelujah. It was the feast of Pentecost. The feast of first fruits. They were in there lighting candles. They were setting showbread in order. Twelve loaves for the twelve tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. They were putting incense. Amen. In that tray. Hallelujah. That had to have the fire from the altar. Because you couldn't just use any fire. It had to come off of the altar. To touch the candlestick. Hallelujah. To ignite. Hallelujah. The amen incense. It still takes an altar visit to get some fire for illumination and revelation and to speak in tongues. That's what incense is all about. And while they were in there, amen, as the scripture and may I borrow this from the word of God in their due course, each man had their particular job to do. Amen. All of a sudden, they started hearing this tearing because uh, amen one man was sitting there hallelujah in front of the veil and the altar of incense and the mercy seat were just a few feet apart but what separated it was this curtain that was woven together and if you think you're strong tearing hallelujah amen if you think you could tear a phone book you wait till you get a garment that's been woven together that's about four or six inches thick and try to tear it, big guy. But God showed this didn't come from earth up. Hallelujah. It was torn from the top down. And can you imagine with me that priest lighting that and all of a sudden hearing that and watching that curtain just fall and his eyes had never seen that altar. It never saw those angels. Never saw the holy place. And all of a sudden, hallelujah, they started saying, you're not going to believe what I just saw in the temple today. And when we read Acts 6 and 7, that a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. It was ghosts. There were some people that were witnesses what they saw in the temple. You can be seated. Not only what they saw, but if you understand, hallelujah, amen, there was the prayer meeting, hallelujah. There was the court, amen, of the Gentiles and the Jews, a giant place. And you can read, amen, it was so large in Acts chapter number 3 that 5,000, hallelujah, amen, received the Holy Ghost because of a healing that took place at the steps of the gate called Beautiful. The priest had to pass, hallelujah, by this gate every day. They had to go through a prayer meeting. Of tongue talkers. And I could just see them. Hallelujah. Bringing one of their friends into that prayer room. And all of a sudden. Hallelujah. This one started. Amen. Talking in tongues. And shout. And the priest just went in there. Lighting candles. And he going. Is this ever boring? Come on. If you walk into one of our prayer meetings, and I'm talking about where everybody's praying in the Holy Ghost, and there's something you can feel. This is what was happening to this great company of priests. Come on, this wasn't just a light miracle. This was people that said, I'm going to give up my job. My ancestors have had this for over, amen, 1,300 years. But I'm going to give this up, hallelujah, because I can't keep this job. Woo. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Now, somebody shout hallelujah. 
Now, God is a good God. I said, God is a good God. And these priests all of a sudden, hallelujah, would say, you know, can I have the Holy Ghost? Right here, right now. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I believe, amen, that when it says a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. Hallelujah. Amen. They got baptized just the way we did. They got the Holy Ghost just the way we did. Hallelujah. And can I tell you, when God saved you, hallelujah, he made you the true priests, the true worshipers, not to just go through the motions of rote and ritual. Living for God is not boring. Not when you get in the Holy Ghost. Not when your sins get washed away. It's not when you see miracles. Not when you see people filled and their lives being changed. And every day we're talking for chapters. Hallelujah. They walk through, amen, this new prayer room where people were speaking in other tongues. And they weren't just at a wedding. They were dancing. They were shouting. Come on, somebody. Woo! And a great, if I say a great company of priests were obedient. The word of God increased through that city. Amen. Let me tell you, hallelujah, by the word of the Lord, hallelujah, what happened, hallelujah, on the day of Pentecost carried over, and it's still alive today. Millions have received the Holy Ghost, and millions are coming in. They're leaving their dead, dry, dull churches for this Pentecostal way. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. When Sister Champion started shouting that first church service, she started at the altar. With her eyes closed, I watched her. I mean, she had her eyes closed, but she had a Holy Ghost smile on her face. She was enjoying the presence of God. She was a black woman, but her face was lit up. She didn't have no makeup on. Her face was shining with the Shekinah glory. And this old sinner boy was watching her dance. And God just took her by the hand and led her right over, amen, to this long-haired old country boy. Hallelujah. And she was about this far from me, talking in tongues. And I'm going, oh, my God. I was raised in a united Methodist church. Hallelujah. Never heard about the Holy Ghost. Never saw one person baptized. No, not one. Never saw anybody get the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues. I knew some of them were dancing on Saturday night, but they weren't dancing in the house of God on Sunday morning. Come on, somebody. God's hallelujah house is an exciting place to be. Woo! Hallelujah. And before I heard any preaching, I saw a fulfillment of promise. I saw a fulfillment of Pentecost. I saw the evidence of joy on a woman's countenance that alcohol, amen, didn't bring to her life. I don't ever want to forget that first day, that first encounter with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because my world was going to be changed forever through that one service. Hallelujah. Amen. Pentecost, hallelujah, has changed this world forever. It's changing lives daily. I'm telling you, it's not hype. It's real. He showed himself alive after his passion. Many infallible proofs. 
How do you know he's alive and well? He's praying in tongues through me every day. Amen. On my journey with him. He's given me power over sin every day that I did not have till he entered into this body. I can't preach without him. I can't live for him without him. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem until you get this power. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Give me a moment. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we see, hallelujah, amen, that the first day of the church, only 120 were there. But God can save a world because 120 turned into 3,120. Acts 4, 5,000 were at. Acts 6, a great company of priests, hallelujah, and a great number of disciples were added to the church where many believe about 50,000 people plus, hallelujah, were tongue talkers, baptized in Jesus' name. It started in, it started in Jerusalem and it made its way to Garden City, Kansas. Because we serve an omnipresent God. And wherever this gospel is going to be preached, I said the true gospel, God's going to be there to fulfill what he has promised. They were dancing. Woo. They were shouting. They were talking in tongues. Amen. They were accused of being drunk. Come on. I can imagine some of the critical tongues that were wagging. Come on, somebody. But until you've tasted this, Till you've experienced this. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You'll never know how wonderful it really is. Now, hallelujah. So in Acts chapter number 2, amen, some were amazed. Some were in doubt. Hallelujah. Others were accusing. Hallelujah. These people, they were drunk and it was early. Amen. You know what we need? We need some Sunday morning drunks. He rose on the third day. But the first day was the day of Pentecost. It was seven Sabbaths and then one. It was 50. Because God said, I'm going to do it on the first day of the week. Somebody. And that's why I said when Pentecost was fully come, they had went through their rote, their ritual. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, tradition kills the move of God. Your pastor's got to, amen, get tradition preached out of you. They had to preach it out of me. I said, I'll never dance like that. And I have. Don't ever say never. I just feel like doing it right now. Hallelujah. I got the Holy Ghost. And I got fire. And it still shut up in my bones. And I want to tell somebody. I want to show forth the praises. And so God used this one church service to rock. Tradition in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. It made the high priest so mad. Amen. That they commanded them that they would not even teach or preach in the name of Jesus. But we ought to obey God rather than men. If this work or this counsel be of men, hallelujah. Hallelujah will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. 
Lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. Hallelujah. I believe one of the most dangerous things to do is just sit there while God is moving. When God is wanting a witness of what he's done for you. Come on, somebody. I'm not ashamed, hallelujah, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm a new man in Christ Jesus because the gospel was preached to me. Hallelujah. Amen. And Peter began to point his finger, hallelujah, because some of them were the ones that were saying, crucify him. But there was mercy for everybody. Are you glad when you come to the house of God? Someone said you could have the Holy Ghost because everyone that asketh receiveth. You've got to ask for forgiveness. Come on. Now, let me preach a little while. Hallelujah. This was ongoing. Hallelujah. And then God got the Apostle Paul, and he started building churches throughout, amen, the coast of Ephesus and Thessalonica, hallelujah, Berea, amen, hallelujah. Whole cities were getting baptized in Jesus' name, like Samaria. Because there was a woman at a well that said, hey, guys, you know the woman I used to be. Let me show you a man that showed me everything I ever did. I know somebody. And because that woman, hallelujah, went back to her city and said, let me bring you to come. And let me just tell the church this. Hallelujah. When that woman started coming and that whole city was being emptied out and coming, you can read this in the book of John. That's where the scripture of, 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 of Jesus where he said, look on the field. They're white already to heart. The, they were coming to Jesus. God said, you're no longer going to be turned forsaken. You're going to be a sought out people. People are tired of dead religion. I said, you've got to be tired of dead religion. I want something that saves me. Ooh, you don't have to quit dancing. Just come to a new place to dance. You don't quit drinking. You just start drinking Holy Ghost wine. And don't be a social drink. I've been in. I was in the world of politics. And they'd, they'd stand around with a warm drink. But they were still walking around. But I knew the other guys. Amen. That were sitting in their chairs. And they had a pile of cans. How many did you drink? I don't know. You need a driver? Nope. I can drive better than I've ever done. We don't need people just sipping on the cup. We need some people that get a hold of the jug. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It'll change the way you live. I don't believe those people that ever danced in the temple before. But there's a first time. Amen. Somebody ought to drink what they drink and dance the way they dance. Woo. Amen. Hallelujah. And so they started getting convicted. Hallelujah. Amen. But Peter had a very merciful message. When they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said unto them, repent. I've got good news for you. Let me just start.
stop right here. You can be seated. Not going to preach a long time. But if you want the Holy Ghost of the book of Acts, you got to repent. You've got to confess and forsake your sins. And he said, you shall have mercy. He that confesseth and forsaketh his sin, he that covereth his sin, is not going to get mercy. There's only one way to cover sin. That's the blood of Jesus. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to know what it feels like to be fully, richly forgiven. And I just throw this in there because I felt like God put this on me. How many ready to receive this here? Hold up your hands here. Preach to me, preacher. When you come down and you ask forgiveness, be ready to forgive everybody that's done things to you. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you your trespasses. But if you forgive not, you can be a prisoner of unforgiveness. Because God is going to be so rich in mercy that you're going to have enough, hallelujah, that all of the ones that offended you and did you wrong can find mercy through you and your prayers and your witness. Woo! How important is repentance? Luke 13, Jesus said it. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Hallelujah. Godly sorrow, Corinthian states, worketh repentance to salvation. Hallelujah. It's a godly sorrow. It's sorry for what you did. It's sorry that your sins caused the excruciating pain of a Savior. And I'm not going to put, I'm not going to crucify him afresh. I'm not going to put him on the cross again. I'm going to show that his grace was not bestowed upon me in vain. I'm going to get out of the sinning business. Old timers, let me just preach this. Old timers used to have a quitting meeting. That was a meeting of repentance. And this sister, she'd get up, get up, sister. Hallelujah. And she'd say, church, I'm sorry because I've been gossiping. I'm using her because she doesn't. And then the next one would say, hallelujah. Amen. I'm sorry because I've been laying in bed on Sunday morning and I just knew I should be there, but uh, just didn't go to church. And I'm sorry, church, for, amen, having that empty place on that pew. Hallelujah. And someone else would get up, his brother get up, and he'd say, hallelujah, amen. I ain't been doing nothing. I ain't been doing nothing. And I'm going to quit that too. And I'm going to quit that too. If you ain't been doing nothing, you need to be, you need to quit that too. Come on, somebody. If you ain't been shouting, you need to quit that. If you ain't, oh, if you ain't been witnessing, you need to quit that. If you ain't doing nothing, start paying your debt to a lost world. You got a testimony. He'll give you power. Ooh, so everybody say repentance. He said you've got to repent. Amen. You've got to name your sin. Amen. Some people when they do laundry, especially guys, they throw the whites, white shirts and their blue jeans together. And their black socks with that. They just put all of that laundry together, add some soap. That's why they need to get hitched. Or watch mama. And some people are like that when they repent. They just put everything in one pile. They say, God, forgive me of my sin. And God knows what you've done. He needs to say, God, I've been lying. I stole. Come on. I've been cussing. 
took your name in vain every now and then. I got an anger problem. Anger, wrath, malice, them. whispers, back, back. I could quote some lists out of Romans, out of Ephesians, hallelujah. But I'm going to got the picture. I mean, I've never started praying, and all of a sudden, God started saying, Well, what about this? But what about this? Amen. <laughs> Come on. How many believe that you gotta you gotta be honest because God is not asking you for information? Oh, you did really? You did that? Well, I'm glad you came to me and told me about that. Come on. Paul said it's reported of the house of Chloe that this is happening. But Jesus said, I know. I know thy works. Come on, somebody. And the beauty of God is though he knows, he loves you better than anybody else that knows. And he's a greater forgiver than anybody you think is your friend. Do I have a witness? He will abundantly let the wicked forsake his way. The unrighteous man is thought, and I will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. Though your sins be as crimson, he said, they shall be as white as snow. So, Peter, hallelujah, this is what Jesus had taught him. You've got to repent. You've got to die out to sin. You've got to be baptized in Jesus Christ's name. The only way, hallelujah, for sins to be remitted is in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus gave his blood for the church. Acts said that God purchased the church with his own blood. Let me introduce Jesus as the mighty God. The everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. The Son that was born and given to a lost and dying world. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to preach long on Jesus' name, baptism. But there's no other blood that was shed for humanity's sin. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No other name will wash away sin. People will not be saved any other way in baptism. He said, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, he was setting a first church service and last church service precedent. This was the first day of the church. And you find the last verse in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, where it said, the Lord added to the church such as should be saved. That is how God adds to his church. Hallelujah. And then he said... Amen. And he was pointing, hallelujah, to these. I believe that we're still talking in tongues, but not out loud. They, the Holy Ghost has come on them, and they were speaking to God and themselves. That's Bible. Come on. Because the preacher was preaching. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When you pray in tongues, it is the Spirit of God giving you utterance. It is God taking control of the most vile part of your body. The tongue can no man tame. The only one that can control the tongue is God. Hallelujah. And the first sign that he shows that he's got control of you, his kingdom has come, is you will speak with other tongues as the Spirit People that used to lie with that tongue, cuss with that tongue, use uh, four-letter words with that tongue. God takes the cussing out of their mouth uh, and puts a Holy Ghost utterance uh, of the greatest intercessor and lover of humanity. And it's the most beautiful, wonderful peace and power that anybody can ever experience. I say experience. Amen. People don't just need church. They need experience. If you stand with me, I'm closing. Hallelujah. Amen. When you repent, 
God will graciously forgive. To have, hallelujah, amen, what they had on the day of Pentecost, you can have if you do what they do. Hallelujah. When you come to an altar and repent, hallelujah, God loves tears. God loves contrition. God loves someone that says, I'm genuinely sorry. I didn't have power over this. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. How many remember what, amen, hallelujah, rolled over your soul when God graciously forgave you? And let me just ask you this. How many feel good when you forgive others? You know why God lets you feel that? Because he wants you to know how he feels. Hallelujah. When he grants forgiveness. Can I tell you, this has rolled over. This is one of the greatest powers of humanity for this New Testament church. Hallelujah. Is the power to forgive. The Jews said, who can forgive sins but God only? Come on. I'll tell you who. Someone that's got Jesus on the inside of them. And I'm going to forgive you just the way Jesus forgave me. That means completely, entirely, I'm going to forget about it, not going to bring it up. Even as Christ forgave you, Ephesians, so also do ye. Hallelujah. You'll never know how wonderful it feels to have your conscience washed. Hallelujah. Your soul clean. Hallelujah. You didn't believe it was possible. Hallelujah. But there is so much power in the name and the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. That it is. Five quarts of blood can wash away the sins of an entire world. Generations from Adam to the cross. And from the cross to the final one baptized. All of those sins were laid upon his shoulder. Hallelujah. He wants to wash away your sin this evening. Hallelujah. He wants to start a personal revival in your experience with God this evening. And everybody that gets the Holy Ghost will speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. But you've got to open your mouth. The Bible says, open the gates and the King of glory shall come in. Let me tell you, these are the gates. I've never seen anybody receive the Holy Ghost with their mouth shut. I've never seen anybody forgiven sin with their mouth. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And the reason many people do it, and I am not trying to cast anything on anyone, I want to help you tonight, is because, hallelujah, myself, every time I opened my mouth, something wrong fell out of it. Come on. And I understand that. But if you ask for a fish, he's not going to give you a serpent. If you ask for bread, he's not going to give you a stone. Hallelujah. If you ask for the Holy Ghost, you know what you're going to get? You're going to get the Holy Ghost. He's going to take control of your tongue. He's going to take control of your life. You're going to feel like shouting. You're going to feel like living again. You're going to feel come on, You're going to feel like telling the whole world what Jesus did for you through the power of the gospel. With every hand raised unto God, I want to invite some people right now to an altar, hallelujah, of repentance, hallelujah. This altar has three steps, repentance, baptism, Holy Ghost. Then the next step is just live for God with every bit that's within you. Come on, take some steps here tonight. Let's get close to God, hallelujah. God will abundantly pardon you. He will wash away all your sin. He'll give you unbelievable power when he fills you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He said, don't leave Jerusalem. Don't leave till you're filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm giving you that same, hallelujah, directive from God. Leave here full of the Holy Ghost. Leave here with your sins washed. Leave here with an abundant pardon in your possession. Let's all pray. Let's all fill this house 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. With words from our soul. Something from your soul.